Friends, TJ and I just landed here in Tahoe, California, and today is May 16th, 2017. And as you can see, it is snowing, and my handy-dandy iPhone says it's 37 degrees, but it has to be colder in order for this white stuff to be coming from the sky. But that aside, I am incredibly excited, and I'm excited for two reasons. You guys saw on Sunday, we just published Ask Moto Man episode 24, the one where I gave some tips on how to buy a used electric car, and a great question came in, and I can't believe I didn't answer this question before, and it is how to buy a sports car, for us car guys, using the principles of Dave Ramsey. Now, when I saw the question, I got excited about it, and I'm like, you know what, I'll answer it when the right car comes along. I didn't realize that four days after the question was posed, the right car would come along, exactly the car I would buy, a 991.2 Targa. Now, this one is a PDK, but the one we're gonna feature in the full first drive review and the tech review is a manual transmission. It is black, it has a red top, and it is beautiful. So with that, how do you buy a car like this using the principles of a guy like Dave Ramsey? Now, before we dive off into a concept that you think sounds ridiculous, buying a $150,000 car on Dave Ramsey principles, you should probably acclimate yourself to who the guy is. Now, most of you probably do know who he is. For the two of you that don't, I'll put a link up to his channel here, and you should check him out. You should also check out his book, The Total Money Makeover. I promise you it will change your life no matter where you are financially. I would go so far as to saying that there wouldn't be Moto Man TV without Dave Ramsey. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get to the business of answering the question. And like all answers, there's a short answer and there's a long answer. Let's start with the short answer. The advice I would give someone to buy a $150,000 sports car, no matter how cool it is, is very similar to the advice that I gave my friend Marcos, who bought that used $7,000 electric vehicle. And the headline there was, being intentional with your spending, being intentional with what you're trying to accomplish. Now, yes, that sounds a hell of a lot like Dave Ramsey, but how does that translate to car guys like you and I that want to buy stuff like this? Well, it all translates to priorities. So, number one, it's being out of debt. Number two, it's having money in the bank. And number three, it's understanding what you're trying to accomplish, the goals you're setting in life. And then you start to understand where a vehicle like this makes sense in your overall financial picture, as well as your overall life picture. Now, yes, I will admit that sounds very touchy-feely, and rather than go down some emotional road here, let me tell you the story of a car guy, specifically this car guy. The story starts back at Arizona State University at the ripe old age of 18 years old, where I had already made my first huge financial mistake. I bought a car, A, I couldn't afford, B, using debt, and C, brand new. Well, there I was already, my priorities out of whack, and I still hadn't figured out life because I was trying to put myself to university and I had a car, as Dave would say, that owned me. I didn't own the car. Now, granted, back then, I didn't know who the hell Dave was. So all I understood was I couldn't sleep at night because I felt real risk instead of being prioritized in life. So let's just say I took my lumps, I sold the car, it was a very expensive lesson, and it was more than just money that I took from that, and I applied that to buying my next car. But I'm still a car guy, I still wanted the cool car, I'm not gonna turn up and buy a Toyota Corolla no matter how great of an appliance it is. So for $3,500 I bought a used 1984 Fiero 2M4 SE, and yes, it did have the suede and fleece interior. Now, I love that car because it had a manual transmission, a sunroof, it was totally cool, but most importantly, I owned it. I wrenched on it myself. In fact, I made it a better car and made a profit on it. I actually made $1,000 and then turned that into a better car, a $6,000 car, a 1986 Mazda RX-7 Sport, also manual transmission, and I did the same thing with that. Drove that a couple of years, added in another like two or $3,000 that I had earned over those years, and I bought a $10,000 car, a 1988 Toyota Supra. I couldn't afford the insurance on the turbo version, so I bought the best one I could afford, and that was a sport roof with a manual transmission. It was burgundy. Man, I love that car. Now I'm gonna pause here in the story because I'm certain some of you were like, well, this guy's an idiot. He just made a stupid mistake. I'm not like that. Well, here's the reality. It wasn't just the 3,500, the 6,000, the 10,000, or even the lesson from the first car. It was more than just the money because in my first year, when I had that real risk in life, 
I nearly failed out of school. I had to go and repeat classes. But by the time I got my priorities in order, I graduated Arizona State University on the dean's list. And then a funny thing happened. I moved back to New York City, the Toyota Supra was sold, and I didn't need a car. But then I started making some real money. And that's when I realized my priorities were starting to get more in order because I wasn't in debt, I was putting money away, and I was thinking about where I wanted to go in life. Now granted, this is the part of the story where I should have really gotten to know Dave Ramsey, and I probably would have bought a house, done all the right things. But instead, my boss at the time walks into my office when I was working technology, Dick Templeton, I'll never forget it, and he drops the first huge, or at least what I thought was huge, all the money in the world, bonus check on my desk. And what did I do? Did I go invest that money? No. Did I go buy a house? No. Three days later, I turned up at BMW of Manhattan and bought a 1997 BMW Z3 that was red, manual transmission, and I loved it. Granted, did I buy it with debt? No. But my priorities started to get out of whack there. And then, of course, a year and a half later, I thought, hey, I bought the car right, I can sell it, and for only $2,000 more, I can buy a Z3M, more power. I need that more power. But here I was, still not prioritizing things. Now, for all those Dave Ramsey disciples out there that are screaming at the screen, oh my God, you should have been at steps four, five, or six at that point. Instead, I was making the same mistakes I was making at 18, just with a lot more zeros, because my priorities were out of whack again. Which brings us back to this $150,000 sports car. Could I afford this car today? Yes, if I really pushed myself and put myself back in that significant risk. But as Dave would say, the car would own me. I wouldn't own the car. And now I've gotten to a point where I've realized after all of these mistakes, as well as some wins down my sports car history, that I realize I'd rather own a home first than get the cool sports car. So yes, yeah, someday shortly, I will have this car. Now this is where we put aside the car guy story and we get into the generic advice. First and foremost, whether you want to buy a $150,000 sports car or a $150,000 MBA, you need to set your priorities. This should be very simple. Then second, anything you want to accomplish, again, whether it's a $150,000 car or a $150,000 home, I don't know where you can buy those nowadays, but they are available, you need to understand that you have to be out of debt to do this because a car like this or a home or an education will only be risk and stress when there's debt hanging over your head. Please understand I'm telling you this from experience, not because I read a book. And then third, when it comes to buying the car, understand what you really, really want. Go out and drive every car that you're interested in. It's kind of like dating. Go out and date as many girls, guys, whatever it is, so you understand what you're willing to put up with, what you really want in life. And the best way I can really encapsulate this, you're not buying a payment, you're buying a car. Too often people will look at something like this and say, oh my God, I would pay a thousand dollars a month for this. If you would look at a car like this, or whatever it is, I would pay $400 a month for it. If you're saying that, well, let me tell you something. Your thinking is broken, because here's the reality of the situation. You have to look at a vehicle like this, and like what's Dave say, you gotta have friction. You gotta look at something like this and say, I would be willing to walk into a Porsche dealer and take real greenbacks, real money, the friction of handling the actual money that you earned, and say to me, this is worth $150,000, or whatever it is, $50,000, $30,000, because then you know it's the right car for you. Then you know that five years down the road, you're not gonna wake up like, oh my God, I can't feed my kids, or oh my God, I can't put a roof over my head. So, I have said a lot. I have shared a lot with you guys here. But the reality of the situation is I'm gonna turn this around to you guys. I am certain many of you will leave comments disagreeing with everything I said here. And fine, you can do that. TJ and I are gonna come up with an episode for you guys all about why you shouldn't lease and why it is the most expensive way to acquire a vehicle and why it wreaks havoc on your future net worth. But in the interim, I have a theory, and the theory is this. There are certain cars, really car brands, that exist because financing and leasing is prevalent in today's world. I would say Porsche is not one of them because it is the most profitable car company in the world. But cars, and you probably know what I'm gonna say here, cars like Lincoln's, cars like an Acura RLX, if you are really honest with yourself and you had, let's say, 
$75,000 to spend on a car. Are you going to write a check for a Lincoln Continental, an Acura RLX, or a BMW 5 Series, or some sort of AMG? Really be honest with this, and that is my question. What cars do you feel exist today and sell today because of easy finance? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with two things. Number one, it pains me to say this, but YouTube has screwed up both the algorithm badly as well as the subscription module. So I ask you to unsubscribe, resubscribe, and click notifications. And number two, I want to leave you with a fun fact. So yes, I am currently focused on buying a house in the town I currently live in or New York City. So in the interim, I'm going to buy a Porsche, just not this one. Let me show you the Porsche I just bought. It's a 911, it's just kind of small. Until I see you next time, bis später.